The Hydrostatic Release Unit, or as we call it, the HRU. Most of us seafarers are familiar with this device, maybe even before embarking our first vessel. The basic concept is that it automatically releases a sinking vessel's life raft or EPIRB on a particular depth. But how do we maintain this device? What's inside this unit? How does it trigger its release mechanism? What's a weak link? How does it work? Well, stick around because in this video, we'll go through all there is to know about the HRU. Let's go! So we have here an old HRU due for replacement. First, we remove the painter line connecting the raft from the HRU. This relieves intrusions in replacing the unit. We then remove the release hook or what it's termed as the pelican hook or slip hook. This releases the tension generating from the straps and the HRU itself. Once unfastened, we can remove the shackles holding the old HRU and replace it with a new unit. Scratch off the expiration date before attaching the unit. It's more convenient that way. And always see to it that you are fitting the unit to its upright position. So let us go into depth of the HRU. We have here a Hammer H20RX unit. R which means raft or life raft and E for EPIRB to which the units are designed respectively. Activating depth is at 1.5 to 4 meters and the validity of this unit is up to 30 months. Putting it on its side, we have the weak link, the strong rope, a spring-loaded blade housed inside which we'll see later, and the chamber keeping the release mechanism. Now let's have a look at what's inside this device and how water pressure triggers its release. First, water goes through these two holes below the blade housing. This action pushes the membrane inside the chamber releasing the blade. The click you heard was the release made. The spring you see here is not the actual spring but the spring I got from the HRU chamber. Here, the real spring is much more solid and durable, just enough to cut the strong rope. So I think we're all done with the parts. Let's see how this unit actually works. We'll be simulating what we've done in the first part, but with an intact unit. First, we remove the screws to expose the triggering mechanism. Once the top is removed, you will see a much smaller spring which I used in the first part of this video. The spring controls the weight being pushed by the water pressure at a certain depth. We remove the spring just to have a good grip and once we lift the locking mechanism, you will hear the click as I have mentioned a while ago. This means that the blade activated and has cut through the strong rope. With that much spring force, you get results like this. A clean cut all around. On our EPIRB HRU, Instead of the strong rope, we have this plastic bolt rod that secures the radio beacon. Although different in design, concept stays the same. So how about the weak link? How does it break? Where does it break? Or how much force is needed for it to break? And an added information, weak links are for life rafts only. We have here our old weak link from our expired HRU unit. This outlet attaches to the deck while this one attaches to the raft's painter line. So when the weak link reaches its breaking point, which is under strain of plus minus 2.2 kilonewtons and 0.4 kilonewtons or around 180 kilograms to 265 kilograms of pulling force, the outlet encased by the red plastic fractures and then breaks apart. You will also see that this outlet also encases a metal bracing inside, reinforcing the weak link up to its breaking point, and releases the raft from the sinking ship to the surface. Well, there you have it. Hope this video helped, and if I'm mistaken on some details, Feel free to correct me on the comment section. And if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you loved it, subscribe. Peace.